And now I think we're live. Oh, now let me check over here. I think we are. I'm just going to make sure I'm not getting anything else up. So why I get organised? Uh, let's listen to some music. I think we'll have Kiara today. You got me feeling kind of crazy. You got me feeling like my head is spinning around. The way you look is so amazing, amazing. I could stare into your eyes for hours and hours. Everything is kind of hazy. We're just dancing in the dark in the flashing lights. I know you, you can't hear what I'm saying. So I'm just going to hold you close. was interesting it just switched uh, straight back to me g'day everyone how are we going today a uh, lovely day today in melbourne spring is in the air and i absolutely adore spring um really looking forward to it we're at uh, top of 18 i think today we're going to uh, which should be beautiful out there um lovely to take uh, my dog ziggy for a walk uh, later on so excited about that i think kerry's going shopping she's just going to bring me in a drink this morning um before she goes so i'm looking forward to that as well so i've got some interesting stories but before we start let's uh, say hello to everyone that is in the chat um finally first one to say g'day david john said uh, that's terrific john nice to see you here um john also said why did they discontinue the a9 well i'm going to talk about that because i'm not sure they have uh, because it's an interesting story on petapixels so stay tuned for that um, because the A9 II, or is it because of the A7 IV? Well, I'll stay tuned. Um, am I the, uh, I am the second one to say good morning. 
Uh, somebody tell David about the typo. I oh, know I put WWPI on, honestly. You know what? I did it three times and it was wrong in different areas. I don't know what it is. I just look at it and I, I can't see it. Oh, I fixed it now anyway, so thanks for telling me. Otherwise, I would have kept it World War PI or something. Oh, who knows? Anyway, I fixed it. Um, and you're from Vegas. You're saying, uh, hello from Vegas. I'm going to WPPI show next week in Vegas. Apparently, a lot of people were pulling out, though. I'm going to talk about that uh, in the story. Um, with the A92 and the A1, why continue making the A9? Well, it's interesting, and I'm not sure that it has been discontinued, but stay tuned. Uh, no more alpha of all Sony. What does that mean? Michael, I'm not sure. <laughs> um, Daryl, because the A9 was becoming affordable. Perhaps. Yeah, it was. I mean, it's great value. If you can pick one up now, they're still really, really good value. Um, here we go, 40 seconds. We're now live. So Michael said that. Uh, Alien Drone said uh, we are li indeed live. Tammy is here. G'day, Tammy. How are you? Yeah, caught you live finally. So nice to see you on here. I've watched a few of Tammy's videos. Um, she has some great stuff. So if you haven't have a looked at, at Tammy's um, YouTube studio uh, channel, check it out. It's just under her name. So, um, hello, David. Hot day in Los Angeles, but a good day for a glass of wine. Ooh, something different today. Um, yep, won't be long, and I'll be having a drink with you guys too. Uh, so only probably a few more weeks. Hot day in Oregon as well. Um, Andre said, hello, David. Steve said, good day. Uh, greetings all. G'day, Steve. How you going? Uh, greetings from Southwest Florida. Rocco's from there. Um, now, my, now, interesting thing too, that this must be the conversion or something or the way that uh, YouTube takes something out because I know Michael, thank you so much for the super chat, Michael. Uh, he just said, here's a coffee. <laughs> so he's done that. But for some reason, it shows 367 up on the chat thing up there and yet it was five dollars he gave so i've got no idea what's going on there but thank you anyway uh, for the donation michael really appreciate it um greetings from southwest florida um john said hello david from what's that livonia a burb of detroit is it oh i've never heard of that uh, michigan oh, okay i haven't been here in a while yeah i haven't seen you for a while john actually hello from maryland aj's just saying hello and he's from california uh, Gotham said, uh, good day from New York City, audio a little low. Oh, it's low, is it? Okay. Um, let me bring it up. Testing, one, two. Oh, I might have to do it here. I don't think, oh, I might have been, that may have lifted it a little bit up. Oops, it's this one. Actually, it's that one, yep. So let me come down. Let me reduce that down a little bit. Oh, thank you so much, Kerry, my darling. No problem. Enjoy your shopping. Uh, how's that now? Is that okay or is it too loud? Let me know. Uh, I've lifted the audio up a little bit. Um, where were we up to? Audio a little low. Uh, hi, David from Florida. Axman said, uh, not complaining, but it seems like the volume is low. Maybe Mike is too far away. No, I had the volume down. I've actually been testing... Um, uh, doing 4k streaming and i've got a whole new setup that i was going to use today to do it um so unfortunately i'm waiting on the, that other software that i use uh, it's a beta testing software i can't sort of mention it at the moment but uh which brings in the chat and it didn't work this morning because he sent me a new version of it it was on beta 8 and it wasn't functioning correctly so i messaged him but it, uh, it's actually from Europe, and so the time's 11.30, so I couldn't get it out there. And that's why I'd change that, because I'd set it for this new system, um, but I had to sort of change it directly. So let me know if the audio is okay now. It should be okay, I think, now. Um, but stay tuned, because I think from next week, hopefully, I'll be able to stream in 4K for you guys. It's going to be interesting to see how it goes. Everyone's saying your mic is a little low. Yeah, hopefully it's come up now. Throw some gain in. <laughs> I know, I've put it, I think I've done it. Um, yeah, my volume is almost max, quite mic. Um, uh, Leslie said, uh, David and everyone, hello. Lovely day in Croydon today. 
Uh, are you out of lockdown? Yes, no lockdown here, Leslie. <laughs> Thank God. Uh, I know it's uh, still in lockdown in Melbourne, though, in Sydney. <laughs> it's crazy. It's all over the place. Um, David, I have got the A9 two months ago in mint condition. Love it. Uh, it's fantastic. I still love my A9. Um, so it's it's uh, an amazing value camera if you can get one at the moment. But I'm not sure it's discontinued. I'm going to talk about that in the first story. Good morning, all. Shooting up in Calundra Sunshine Coast today. Fun times. There you go. Oh, oh, so Tammy's staying still, though. Um, Michael said, a volume on my phone is fine. Audio is good now. Okay, because I, I moved it up twice. So it should be a bit better now. Oh, some are saying it's still a bit low. Let me move it up a bit more. Uh, testing one, two. We'll try that and see how that is. Um, good evening from Western New York. Sounds good to me, but I'm wearing earphones. Uh, g'day from Norway. I skipped the A9 and bought the A1. <laughs> That's a big skip there that you've done, Daryl. <laughs> I loved it. I mean, I really did love using the A1. It's gone back now to Sony. I tried to uh, not send it back, <laughs> but they wanted it back. I've still got to do the review. I've just been the, – the thing is I've been trying to set up this new studio – um, this 4K streaming setup that I've been getting ready to do and it's taken forever because it was so hard to get it all organised and get things in sync and the audio correct and so, you know, it's, um, like I said, I'm only doing 1080 now but I did a test yesterday and it was working fantastic in 4K so stay tuned uh, for that as well. Uh, aren't we still in lockdown, David? Not in Melbourne, uh, Mike. Uh, not in country Victoria, we're out. Um, Melbourne is still in it, but I live in uh, Bacchus Marsh, which is the country. Um, evening from Bristol, UK. Boy, you're up late, Willports. Uh, that's for sure. And Tammy said, good. All right, so let's get stuck into it. I'm going to have my Milo. It's chocolate milk. Here we go. Mm, not bad. Ooh, a long ride to give a donation. <laughs> yeah, I love this. What are you saying, Long Rider? Super chat from Long Rider. I'm starting a rumor Osler is going to Canon. <laughs> you know, that's never going to happen. Um, there's no way known I'm changing again. I've already gone once from um, uh, Nikon to Sony, uh, and I did that at the time because uh, Nikon had just gone nowhere. Um, but there's no way I'm uh, going to switch now for cameras. It doesn't mean I'll never get another camera band, but I'm not going to switch. It might just be that I have another camera. But no, nah, look, if I was buying anything at the moment, it would be another one of these. Get a load of this cage. I love this cage. This is so cool, this cage. Oh. Uh, this would be the one uh, that I would be buying if I was buying another camera now, even though I've just used the A1. I love the A1, don't get me wrong. I really loved it, but I really miss this. And it's just the way that I shoot. I adore having um, this fold-out rear screen. And like I've said to you before, I think 12 megapixels now that I'm doing it is uh, the best file size that I've, I've used for ages, and I just love it. And I love the look of the files. But, if yeah, like I said, if I was buying another camera, I'd buy another one of these. But this cage is absolutely awesome. I just leave it on the whole time. Uh, it is tight, Tammy, because the beautiful thing about it is the way it sort of, you know, folds around the the side there. Uh, so the grip is really nice to hold on to. Um, you can take this whole side off and then it becomes a half a cage. I'm going to need your nose. Yeah, you can take that off there and then it becomes half a cage if you want to do it that way. But I've found I've got access to all the controls anyway. I like the way, too, that this sits out on the front because... Um, if you're putting something in the hot shoe here, you've still got room there too, so that's really nice as well. Um, you know, I've got full access underneath uh, there too. Um, on the side, you've got nice, you know, clear, uh, clear sort of spaces here between here. Um, but I really love it. But the hand, this is the part I love the most. It just feels beautiful. Look at the form fitting of that thing. I just love it. It's just so good. So I leave that on all the time. I just leave it on now um, because it, it's it's a really light cage. It's it's I think it's alium, uh, uh, aerial aluminium, so aerial grade aluminium. So it's really really good. Um, so let me just see before we go into the stories. Um, Wellport said, um, I think I just got another donation. Did I? I don't know. It came up. I don't know. Oh yeah, there we go, Leslie. 
$10 from Leslie. Thank you so much for that, Leslie. Really appreciate it. Uh, everything helps. <laughs> um, setting up a new camera for a trip, Wilport said. Uh, what camera are you setting up? Let me know. Mark said, crazy thinking, uh, can you purchase two A9s and a good lens for the cost of the A1 here in the in Oz? I know that's the thing, Mark, isn't it? Too like, it, it'd be interesting which way I'd go. I, I think I've got... <laughs> itchy nose um i think if um i had the money and money was no object i'd buy the a1 i'm gonna have to sneeze <laughs> stay there i'm gonna go to tissue Ooh. <laughs> well, that was nice and awkward. It was driving me nuts. It's still itchy. All right, that's very professional. <laughs> um, yeah, I think, look, Mark, it is it is incredibly uh, expensive here in Australia. The uh, What is it, $10,000, I think. So you've really got to have uh, the money to afford that, I think, at this stage. That's why probably, like I said, I'd, I'd probably get another one of these, definitely. Um, but yeah, the thought that you could get two A9s for the price of one A1, but if you're looking for a camera that does it all, the A1 is it. <laughs> I've killed it. <laughs> Hope you haven't got COVID. No, I've had, I've had my injection, so I'm fine. Um, so I'm not sure, but yeah, it's, it's hard to say, but you always remember if you're a wedding photographer, you always need two cameras. So you would need another camera anyway, even if you had the A1. So you'd need another camera. But what the A1 does is just, it is unbelievable. You know, you think you can do 8K in that camera, the autofocus is amazing. I mean, it is. It's it's Sony's number one camera, so it's brilliant. Um, but, yeah, you could get two A, A9s, I know. Um, let me see. Wes said, uh, hi from Bristol. Uh, UK looking forward to getting the A92. Wondering where the new Sony cameras will fit around the A1. Well, it's it's an interesting concept. Um, I still think that the longer we have to wait for the A74, the better that camera is going to be. And I did sort of say to you guys last week, I think that the uh, Sony A74 is going to be a mix between the A9, uh, the A7S 3 and also the A1. I think it's going to be a combination of all those cameras put together. The longer it takes for Sony to bring that out, the better that camera is going to be. Um, so because they will have already sold a number of A7S 3s they would have already sold a, a, you know, a number of A1s uh, and also a 92 So they're probably not going to take away from those sales and it won't matter. Remember, I did say to you that... Um, with when the A7 III was released, they uh, really it, it destroyed the A7S II, and that was the the current A7S at the time. Uh, but it was so good uh, in the video aspects, apart from the really high ISO, uh, it sort of beat it from all of that perspective. So I, I think the A7 III, A7 IV is going to be an amazing camera. I really do. Um. What else have we got? So Gilbert's here. So nice to see you here, Gilbert. Boy, you're up late tonight. What time is that over there? I'll just check on my phone. It is in London at the moment, 12.47 a.m. What are you doing, Gilbert? You should be, uh, you should be in bed. <laughs> I'll move this tissue so you don't look at it. Hmm. Uh, Tammy said that is a tight cage. Yeah, it's a great looking cage. It really is. Uh, I'm looking at the A7R3 right now as a wildlife shooter. Yeah, the A7 III is still, uh, R3 is an amazing camera. You can get that at, at a good price too. Um, because I heard people are getting fine uh, shoot, fine shooting in the CBD. You would be at the moment, yes, because it's in lockdown, so you're not meant to be out. Um, did anyone notice that Canon finally moving away from the, the mode dial? Seen the images of the R3, a move in the right direction in my opinion. Oh, interesting. Uh, yeah, type meaning sweet. Yeah, I understand what you meant, uh, Tammy. Um, 
Uh, Leslie gave me the donation. <laughs> Tammy said, God bless you. <laughs> I was going to sneeze. The gimbals are gone. They are. Uh, they're in the back room, actually. I just tried to clean everything up. And have you noticed I've just brightened up the studio rather than being dark? So let me know what you think. Um, so interesting statue. I know I love it. Uh, it's Kerry got me that. Uh, it's pretty tall. You want, I'll stand next to it. You see, wait till you see the size. Oh. I'm so short, I was standing right next to her boobs. I didn't want to look sideways. <laughs> oh. uh, let me see. Uh, you won't like me waiting on the Z9, so I got uh, the, Z, uh, the Z6 II for the meantime, not replacing my D850s uh, as it won't be coming uh, near us for ordering until late 22. Uh, I don't... I. I've got no problem with you getting uh, the Nikon cameras. I don't really care what anyone shoots, to be completely honest. Um, and I've said that all along. I think all the cameras that are out there at the moment are just amazing. Canon, Nikon, um, you know, uh, Fuji, Sony, all of them. They're, they're all incredible. So don't feel like you have to be uh, shooting Sony to be on here at all. It's just that this is the Sony Rumors show uh, at the moment. But, I mean, that's what it is. I shouldn't say at the moment. Um but I, I've got no problem with any camera. I uh, hope you haven't got COVID yet. <laughs> no, I haven't. Um, looking for uh, to Tamron 35 to 150 F2, any news about the price tag and shipping dates? No, not yet, but I will be getting those lenses as soon as it well before their release. So it's just a matter of when Tamron Australia gets them here. Uh, they always send them to me first. So uh, I'll get those lenses soon. So I'll let you know because you'll see a review about it. Um, Laugh out loud, did I tickle the Santa nose? I know, it was itchy. Um, is that the new uh, iMac behind you? No, it's an old one. Check it out, it's really old. Mm, that's, uh, I don't know, it's probably 2005 or something. I don't know, it's a real old one. That's why I've got it sit there. It's sort of a vintage one. Um, let me just check down here because I've got to start. Uh, since most places do not have the Sony a7S III in stock, what is the most you would pay for a used one? Mm. I'm not sure. It depends on the price that they are, uh, Ken. Um, I mean, look, if, it's, um, if you really need one and then... Um, you're only going to look the. You would probably pay almost retail, I think. If they're going to, if they're becoming hard to get in stock, they are going to be almost the price of retail. So you probably might save two hundred dollars, you know. So I think you're going to have to get close to there, uh, depending on how rare they get. They may even uh, end up going for more than what retail is. It just depends on if Sony, because I did talk about that last week that uh, Sony gave an apology about the cameras being in stock due to the chip shortage. So it could be, in fact, that you end up paying more than what the original price was. Uh, so you're going to be close, though. You will be close to what you pay for a new one. Just get another A7R4 and an A9. Uh, David, do we really need 8K today? No, that we don't. And that's the thing. Look, I shot that video that I uh, played for you last week, and it's also down in my A1 review of the dancer, ain't you? Um, I shot in 8K, but I had an awful problems <laughs> editing it. Um, so probably not. But there is some wonderful features about it as computers get more powerful. I mean, look, the, I'm using the M1 Mac, and that struggles with 8K. Uh, it's fine with 4K. But there's a new version of that probably coming out in October. It'll be the M1X. Uh, and that probably will handle 8K. So, yes, we may not, but it does future-proof it. And the, the, the great thing about the A1 is that you don't have to use 8K if you don't want to. Um, so that's a really good feature of that. But what I, I must try and do, because I've still got the files, I think, is I must try and grab a still off that because I'm curious to see what the stills look like. Uh, to be able to get stills of an 8K file would be awesome. And I must still look at that. Um, so we probably don't need it, no, but you don't need it. You don't have to use it if you don't want to. You can just shoot 4K. 
Um, yes, yeah, said it's early. Uh, Aureo, g'day, Aureo. Uh, hi, David. I sold my A73 while it still has a good value because the A74, when the A74 is out, uh, it's going to cut the A73 price in half. Yeah, you're right. And I'm almost tempted to do that too, Aureo. Um, it's probably a good idea uh, reasonably soon to try and get rid of that. So I might think about doing that myself. Uh, I bet you love the A7S3, though. It's just so good. Um, Gilbert said, Oreo Mini, or even later for you. Um, that's about it. Uh, let me check down here. Alien Drone said, A74 is going to be in short supply for its first six months. Yep. Uh, if Sony do announce the A74, you, if you want one, you are going to have to order that immediately, pre-order, because if you don't, I think you're going to be waiting months. Uh, I really do. Um, so the statue is the normal size. Yeah, it is. I'm just short, Mark. Yeah, so the statue is normal size. Um, well, I think it, we know what your thumbnail should be. <laughs> Everyone's laughing because I said I was just looking at her boobs. Um, what are the odds the A74 will be announced in September? Well, I wouldn't be surprised still, but I think late September. But I, I think even if it's announced, there's going to be a period where we have to wait a while. Um, but like I said to you, the longer we have to wait for that announcement, the better that camera will be. Um, the odds are one to one. David and I met, uh, David and I met, David and I met, uh, and we only had eye contact not knowing that he was David here. Yeah. <laughs> that was in Melbourne, wasn't it, Michael? I remember that. Um, Gilbert said, AK doesn't play very well on YouTube, although, uh, they support it now. Um, and Gilbert said, uh, I'm up working, but sneakily listening here live. All right. So let's get stuck into the stories today. Um, so let's have a look at the first one. Let me go down to here, which is the browser, and then we'll have a look. Now, this is really interesting because I know WPPI is going to be on next, uh, it's in a couple of days, isn't it? I think it's tomorrow or something or a couple of days' time, but Sony have pulled out. Now, this is really interesting because early on they said that um, they were going to show up. So originally they weren't going to be there. Then they put out a statement to say that they were going to show up for uh, WPPI. Well, now they've said that they're not going to show up uh, for WPPI um, due to all of the, you know, the COVID and stuff like that that's out there. So um, so it's a bit of a shame, I suppose, if you'd already booked in uh, there. Now, I believe that um, Nikon also is not, or is it Fuji? I can't remember. There was a few that weren't going to be there. So it's just saying down here that, um, just one week after Sony joined WPPI's list of exhibitors for this year's 2021 show, the company has announced it will not be attending this year. Uh, the move caps widespread concern from the attendees and reports of multiple speakers and instructors cancelling plans uh, to attend. Yeah, it's from August the 15th to 19. Um, and I think looking down here, it was saying too that some other uh companies aren't going to be there let me just have a look down here um, i'm just trying to see what it says without reading the whole thing out yeah they're just talking about the virus and stuff and how it can spread and, and things like that but they're saying with sony out only canon and sigma remain as major camera or lens manufacturers attending the show nikon and fujifilm already choose not chose not to attend so yeah, so it's it's not good news. I mean, so you've not got Sony, you haven't got Nikon, you haven't got Fuji, and a number of people are also um, have, have basically said they're not going to go. So I think if I bought tickets for that, I'd be a little bit uh, upset. I'm glad when I went two years ago, because it wasn't on the year after due to the COVID, but I'm glad it's not me that's gone this time with the, all of those people that are pulling out. So it's a, a real shame... Uh, for what's going on, you know, and the longer this sort of stuff happens, the probably the worse it's going to get. Um, I mean, I was even a little bit surprised when I went to WPPI two years ago. It was a lot smaller than what I thought it was. Uh, that's because I think I'd looked at it on YouTube and stuff like that the year before or the years before that, and it seemed to be much bigger. Um, but I went and it seems to be that these trade shows are getting smaller and smaller in size. Uh, and companies now can do everything online, and that's probably the way that it's going to be in the future. But anyway, so, you know, that's that's what it is. So anyway, so Sony aren't going to be there. So if you are intending to go and look at Sony, uh, tough luck. <laughs> Not there. 
I'm going to keep going here. <laughs> Some, someone says as long as Pentax is there. Um, so let me go to the next story because I wanted to show you this. Let me just, oh, I can't blow that because I'm in the way. Oh, can I move a little bit? Yeah. All right. So it says that uh, the original Sony Alpha A9 appears to be him discontinued and this is what I wanted to discuss with all of you guys because this is interesting so this is from Petapixel now it's I did notice on Sony Alpha Rooms this morning that they said that it was it's saying discontinued in uh, B&H photo but the, the the interesting thing is in here and they're saying is it really discontinued um, it says it appears to be discontinued through a few retailers including Adorama leading to the appearance that the company has retired the sports camera that was originally announced in 2017. Um, and it says, uh, Sony Alpha Room has also spotted it's now listed as discontinued on both B&H and Adorama. Petapixel reached out to Sony, but the company was unavailable for comment. That said, uh, and said, look at Sony's official website that, that shows the camera had not been discontinued, but is simply listed as out of stock. So this is the interesting thing. And, and when you go down here, they're saying here that some dealers may have marked the A9 uh, as discontinued because they simply are unable to purchase more of them at this time. Sony has a history of maintaining the availability of older cameras, camera models at a lower price than the new option for years after the replacement um, has been announced. And the Sony A9 is barely four years old, even though the A7 Alpha, uh, A7R Mark IV has been uh, on the market for some time. The previous Alpha A7 Mark III is still available, for example. Um, and, they, they, and this is what I think too, could be, this could be the case because it's saying in here, due to the ongoing silicon shortage and production de uh, delays, likely caused by this fire that they had, uh, and also uh, the silicon shortage that's out there, it makes sense that Sony would be quietly putting the brakes on the production of some of the older cameras. So what they're saying is that due to the chip shortage that's out there, uh, and also that fire, that what they're doing is they're trying to keep uh, the newer cameras that have been released um, getting out to retail stores, and obviously they're pulling back on the older cameras uh, because of that shortage. So it's interesting to see what they're saying. So they, it, it appears that it may not be discontinued. Um, it also says earlier this year, um, that while Sony intended to announce the release of multiple cameras in 2021, which would be like I discussed with the A7 uh, IV, um, the AKM fire and the ongoing part shortage would result in delays. No more than halfway through the year, it's clear that production issues are affecting uh, more than just new products. So it's affecting everything. Uh, and they're saying in here that... Um, Basically, the A9 performs almost identically to the A9 Mark II. Now, I've proven that. I did a test between both cameras, and really, I honestly thought that there was really, it was just a very, very small incremental upgrade, uh, apart from the networking features um, and things like that. But the A9, the original A9, was so close in performance to the A9 Mark II that really, I think both are terrific cameras. Um, so I, I think it may just be a part shortage, and that's what that whole article is about. So I just wanted to share that with you because it may not be that it's discontinued. So stay tuned for that anyway. Um, the next story, I am going to come back to the chat at the end, but I just want to get through the news now. Next story, this is an interesting one um, because Canon, uh, now why does that go down? The, oh, I'll have to bring that down a little bit for you. Uh, so they're saying here that uh, the Canon R5 uh, beats out the Sony Alpha A1 in comprehensive IBIS test. Now, I don't really think this is true, and it's just the way Peter Pixel wrote this, but I'll, I'll discuss why in a minute. Um, so they're saying that um, they didn't, this is this digital picture, um, has published an in-depth in-body stabilization test. Now, they're only talking about stills here. Um, of the Canon EOS R5 and the Sony Alpha A1. And in many cases, Canon's EOS R5 showed a third to two third of stop advantage over Sony's flagship. Now, a third to two third of a stops is not a big deal. And I'll mention about how they did this test too. They're saying that the camera and lens reviewed, um, I think they both used 50 millimeters. 
but then they also said here that I think they both use the 51.2, uh, a Canon lens and the Sony uh, new lens. Uh, they said Sony released a firmware update for the Alpha Camera 1 just after this um, was published, but they then redid the test with the A1 having the latest firmware. So they, they wanted to test it with the latest firmware. And they said that even with the latest firmware, that it still had that one-third to two-thirds of a stop. Uh, better. Now they were saying they were shooting both with the um, what is the RF 51.2 and also the FE 51.2. So they were both using, you know, the, the newest lenses that are out there. Both cameras are set to uh, front curtain shutter, single shot mode in shutter priority, and then they snapped off some stills. And I think they were saying that they wanted to shoot with one uh, twenty fifth of a second. So in in other words, it's you know it's it's slow shutter, but. I don't know. I mean, look, they're saying that it's one third to two thirds of a stop, but I mean, it, really, they're, they're both the same if you're dealing with this because you're not really going to be shooting at one twenty fifth of a second much anyway, unless you wanted to say slow down a waterfall or get movement into the shot. So you, you're not going to do that. And remember, if you're dealing with, say, only being able to shoot at one twenty fifth due to the fact that it's so dark, I would just raise the ISO. Uh, raising the ISO on these new cameras. Like particularly if you're dealing with the Sony uh, series cameras like the A9, uh, the um, A7S III, the A1, yeah, well any of them, even the A7 III, you can pump up the ISO and then raise your shutter speed anyway and then you're not going to have anything of an issue with stabilisation anyway. Where this probably would be a bigger difference is if you were dealing with video and I thought that probably would be a better test. Uh, here rather than say uh, shooting for stills which is what they've done because I think if you're dealing with stills there's no difference between the two cameras really at all I mean a third of a stop to two thirds of a stop is, is nothing anyway that's I just thought I'd share that with you um, then we've got this uh, article which is talking about uh, camera sales and I've got two articles that I'll discuss with you here but the interesting thing here is that um, it's showing how well Sony is doing and how stable Sony's doing at the moment. Uh, you can look at Canon over here. Um, they've sort of stayed fairly stable and the quarter four, they've actually had a big jump and it's probably due to the new cameras that have been released. Um, if you look at Nikon, uh, sorry, Sony, Sony have been uh, pretty stable the whole way through. Uh, they did lose a little bit in this quarter, but quarter four, they've sort of moved back up again. And I'll show another article in a minute as well. You can see Olympus, um, really, uh, the other camera manufacturers are, are pretty well struggling if you look at this. That's Olympus, um, that's Panasonic, Nikon, and also Fujifilm uh, there as well. But you can see clearly from looking at this, Canon and Sony are, are you know, leading the pack, that's for sure. And if you look at it overall, um, Sony are ahead and just wait till the a7 IV comes out. That really is going to uh, push that up. Uh, now, sort of to that, I wanted to also show this because they're also saying that Sony is doing a lot of money with lenses from other companies like Tamron. And they're saying what, can you imagine uh, how much money Sony are making from Tamron? Because they own 15% of Tamron and the lenses now for Tamron are selling like crazy. So what a great thing that Sony did by releasing that or buying part of Tamron and then opening up the system to Tamron. Uh, because they're saying how much uh, things have uh, improved and how much they're making on those uh, lenses. Like, for instance, it's saying uh, Sony holds a 15% uh, 15 share of the Tamron company, and their latest financial uh, report from Tamron shows impressive numbers. And what they're saying is here that the operating income increased, uh, rising 4.4. Let me just blow this up for you a little bit. Um, rising 4.4 times from a year ago level. So they've gone 4.4 times over a year. Particularly sales of products for mirrorless cameras uh, increase, have increased significantly and for, forecasts have been revised upwards as well. So can you imagine now when these new Sony uh, Tamron lenses come out as well, how they're going to sell? And I think the thing too now is that you're dealing with um, Sigma, you're dealing with Tamron, uh, and also Sony, the lenses are incredible. And also Samyang make great lenses. Um, you're dealing with those companies, but particularly I think Tamron is going to be selling so many of these uh, because they're releasing lenses like crazy at the moment. And the quality has been great in all of them. 
Um, so that, that article's there anyway. You can sort of read the forecast and how much it's improved. See, if you look here, net sales was 33 uh, 579 or something. Now it's gone up to 40,800. So the net sales have really increased, which is a great result. Um, just wanted to talk about this for a minute. Um, that the uh, new Sony um, ZV1E reviews are in. Uh, it's saying here that still got an itchy nose. They're still saying here that the camera isn't getting much love from YouTubers. And not, look, I don't really understand it because it's the, it's. When I say so cheap, it is, I mean, it's still money, but it is so cheap for what you're getting. Now, yes, it's not a fantastic release. It's not a leading sort of technology and hardware. For the price of what this is, though, I think it's a really good camera. I mean, you're getting everything like what an A6400 has uh, with uh, a fold-out rear screen, basically. You know, I mean, it's... I, I think for what it is, I don't really understand why they're all um, giving it such a bad rating because it, it, it is definitely designed to be an entry-level camera and it's priced as an entry-level camera. Um, I mean, I think if I was buying an A6400 now or an A6600, I'd probably just go out and buy that camera. So I, I really understand the hate that's out there for that. It's interesting. Last thing before we go to Q&A is this, this is interesting because Godox have announced this new macro flash. Now this looks exactly the same as the flash that I used to have for my Nikon cameras. Um, so it, it's, uh, it was worked exactly the same way. They, they just clip onto the lens mount and, the, and then you can get a complete circle around your um, lens and then you can um, get a nice, a beautiful macro flash. But I used to use these a little bit different sometimes because they were so small that I used to hide them in all locations around the room. I used to put them behind couches, in cupboards, uh, all over the place because it had the exact same system um, for uh, the uh, Nikon. And, and the design is exactly the same as well. So I think Code, Godox have just copied that design. Uh, but they're saying it will be distributed under Flashpoint brand at Adorama as well. And it's called the Air MF12 Macro. Let me just open this up. I just want to see if it mentions the price. I think they're about $100. They're $109 each. Um, so that's the thing you'd have to do. So you do have to buy individual flashes. Uh, but like I said, I think I used to have four. I didn't have... Um, I can't show you that on there because it's a different screen. But yeah, they're saying they're $109 pre-order at the moment. I think I used to have four when I did it. It used to have the uh, top, bottom, and the two sides down there. Uh, so it does add up if you're going to do it that way. You know, you're going to be paying $600 or $700. Uh, but they are quite useful, like I said, if you want to stick them into uh, little locations where you can't get a light apart from that. Because um, they are wireless, which is great as well. Uh, you can sort of see that the, you know, you see your power settings and stuff like that through here. Little stand. Like I said, it almost looks exactly the same as the one I had for Nikon. Um, but I'll leave the link down below if anyone is interested in this uh, as well. Um, but it's pretty cool. If you do a lot of flash work, uh, this would be a great system uh, to actually have. You can see it just fi it fires from your Godox um, transmitter there as well. Oh, it says $109 down there as well. Uh, the adapter ring, so it's $723 if you want this uh, as it is there. But that's, that's not that expensive if you think that you're getting that number of flashes. Um, now, let's go to chat. So let me go back to here. Uh, so let me come down. Um, Gilbert says AK doesn't play very well on YouTube, although uh, they support it now. Yeah, I don't download. I do download a lot of 4K stuff, though. But when I streamed the other day, it looked like it was all right. What I'm interested to know, though, when I do the 4K stream, and hopefully I can do next week's live as 4K, um, I'm hoping that it's going to be interesting to see what you see at the other end. Uh, because whether if you haven't got very fast bandwidth, I'm wondering how it appears. And that's the thing I've got to test because it may not be worth me doing it. But when I did it, because I've got um, 1,000 gigabit uh, upload and stuff or download, um, so I can view 4K footage without a problem. But I'm just interested to see what happens if you haven't got that. So we'll find out in the next live stream. Or I might even do a test um, before next week is alive and then test it there to see how 4K works. Um, 
Now, where were we? Uh, well, I think uh, we know what your thumbnail should be, David. <laughs> You're talking about what I was doing before with the new Susie back there. I love it. Um, where were we? Let me come back down to where we were. Oh, hang on. That was uh, Gilbert. The upscale and Final Cut Pro X is great going ProRes uh, at 4K60 for my A7R4. Trade shows as we know it are over COVID or not. Yeah, I think you're right, Gilbert. I think now that people can do um, things online and they can go live on that side of it, uh, I think you're correct. Uh, you may have what Sony have done like in New York and stuff where they did do independent shows. You might still find that's the case. But I think the longer all of this stuff goes on, the more it will be the sort of death of, for those um, trade shows because people in the end are not going to go. The, the suppliers, it's very, very expensive to, to do things at those shows. And when they could just do, say, a online version of that, I think that's probably the future, the way that this is going to go. And I think, uh, you know, everything that's happened over the last 12 months, 18 months, has probably made that happen quicker than what it would have. So who knows? I mean, I, I would expect WPPI is going to be quite a small show uh, because people just aren't going to go. Um, Randy said, I think that uh, Sony will have at least uh, announced the A7 IV by September or risk losing customers to the competition. So many new cameras are going to be announced or in development. I don't think, I don't think they'll probably switch, Randy, though, because Sony already have an amazing... Um, Amazing cameras. I mean, the A7 III is still a terrific camera. And the price now that you can get an A9 IV, you know, an A7R III, um, they're all really uh, good cameras now for the price that you can get them for. But I agree with you. It's only a matter of time until they bring out the A7 IV. And I'm still sort of hoping that they announce it sometime late September. But I don't think many people will switch um, unless they had to. So long as Pentex shows up, uh, the happy clam said at WPPI. Joe said, I'm guessing the attendance is going to be low. Uh, I just got a floor pass for free this week. Yeah, probably, Joe. I think that's what it's going to be. Um, if I remember correctly, they released the A7 III at WPPI. Maybe but without the A7 IV, they don't feel like being there. Besides the COVID thing, obviously, I was planning on going, but maybe not now. Yeah, like I said, it's... Um, I'm glad I went two years ago. I certainly probably wouldn't feel like I'd be going this year, that's for sure. Uh, I will let everyone know next week about the WPPI show. Well, thanks, Joe. It'll be interesting. I'm sure we'll see stuff live that YouTubers and stuff are going to be there. I'm not sure whether Ike's going to go. He probably will. Uh, but he usually does live streams and stuff from there. Uh, but that was the name... Uh, but that was the same as a D850 it was marked, discontinued, but was stock-related, yeah. And I wouldn't be surprised if that's the case. Um, Re9, uh, Mark said, Re the A9 discontinued. Sony has to cut away older cameras sooner than later due to the chip shortage. Yeah, but it, that's what I'm saying, though, Mark. But it might be once that recovers that they come back. Um, if you want as many A7s um, to be available as early as possible, you probably don't want older models to take up the manufacturing capacity. Yep, probably, Novak. Gilbert said, I've just done a search in the UK for an A9 and can't find one in stock even listed. Interesting. Um, I just signed on. How are you, David? Really good, mate. How are you? Good to see you here. Any news on the Alpha A1 shortage? No, well, it's like everything at the moment with, um, you know, the, uh, the chip shortage that's out there. Uh, I think anything is probably going to be hard. Uh, Sony did put out an announcement last week about that, but that was with the A7S III. I, I didn't realise there was a shortage on the A1, uh, which is really going to hold prices up. They're not going to drop, that's for sure. Uh, if that's the case. Um, Mark said, I just think these side-by-side -side comparisons are useless and can't be used as a guideline in real life shooting. You're talking about the Canon, yeah, I understand that, Mark. Yeah, it is. And look, I've never found that Sony have an issue with stabilization for stills, ever. Um, so, I mean, it is what it is. Um, 
this <laughs> this show gives me camera fever. I'm about to pull the trigger on a Tamron 70 to 70 APS-C lens. It's such a great lens. Uh, it really is. I love that lens. Tamron must have set up more manufacturing lines with all their new lenses. I know they've been kicking them out of the ballpark, haven't they, With um, or hitting it out of the ballpark um, with uh, these new releases. And there's the two lenses coming up shortly. Uh, it's fantastic. Um, Sam Yang makes great budget lenses. Um, best no, but for the money, uh, they go really far. They do. And like I said, most people, if you're looking at the image, would never tell it was shot on a Samyang or any other lens. So unless you're a pixel peeper, half the time you can't tell the difference. Uh, same with Tamron. Uh, Tony also said most YouTubers are on A7S 3s or R5, so they wouldn't be impressed. And that's what, and that's the interesting thing too. So you can't compare like an A7S 3 to that. And that's what I don't really understand, the, the hate there really, because it's it's a entry-level camera. You're not paying massive money like you are for an A7S III and, and things like that. So um, the professional YouTubers aren't going to find, uh, are going to find it underwhelming. Uh, I think a lot of the YouTubers' heads are up there. <laughs> I should get a real job. I love it. Uh, oh, Gilbert, D Gilbert, don't hold back. This is the thing. Don't hold back, mate. Um, I think most YouTubers, except for photographers and videographers, really don't want anything to do with the interchangeable lenses. Remember, they don't have um, our gas. Um, our gas, yeah, true. Um, give David a thumbs up. Yes, really would appreciate it, guys, if you could give me a thumbs up. Remember, I am unsponsored, so it does really help. Uh, 105 current viewers and only 16 thumbs up. What's going on, people? Like I said, yeah, I would really appreciate that if you could um, give me a thumbs up. It does make a massive difference, and people have, so uh, thank you so much for that. And then we've caught up to all of the chat, so I'll give it a, another few bits to see if anyone uh, asks any other questions before we go. Stay tuned. I've got a couple of reviews coming up this week. I've just been stuck. I haven't posted a single thing this week due to the fact of me getting all of this um 4K stuff and recording stuff and everything sort of sorted out. Um, I've got a whole new system come up with Blackmagic stuff, so stay tuned for that. Uh, so I'm, I'm really excited about being able to broadcast 4K. Uh, so stay tuned. Now, it looks like we're at the end of uh, questions. Um, hope you like Pix just popped in and said, Hi, David, how are you, mate? Um, I hope you have a great weekend. Um, Stay safe. Uh, like I said, we're at least allowed out now, so I can go and do something out there, but Melbourne's still in lockdown. Sydney's still in lockdown. Um, Brisbane is out of lockdown, I think, now. Yeah, they are out of lockdown now, but who knows what's going to happen. But <laughs> apart from that, everyone, um, leave any comments down below, uh, and I'll get back to you as soon as uh, we can. Oh, I didn't turn the black hole on. Actually, it's behind me, but I didn't even turn it on. I need to move that so that you can see it. Hmm. Now... Out of curiosity, has anyone noticed any difference in picture quality today? Because I'm using the A9 and the 16 to 35. I don't think that the 16 to 35 is really that sharp. This is the F4 version, and it probably doesn't look as sharp as what I was using with my A6400 and the Samyang. Uh, sorry, and the Samsung 16 mil, because that Samsung 16 mil is insanely sharp. Um, <laughs> Someone said they just blinked. I love it. Um, but, yeah, so no one mentioned it, which is interesting. So, yeah, this is a completely different camera and a com obviously a different lens, but no one said it looks different. So I was curious to see if anyone had noticed that or not. Um, what else have we got down here? Have you used the Atmos V with the A1? No, I didn't. Um, I just didn't have time. Uh, Daryl to do that because I only had it for uh, two weeks and I was flat out getting out and then we got in lockdown so I was screwed basically uh, so I couldn't get out and use it but no I didn't it would work fine though it'd be terrific um, I have cash uh, wanting A92 but waiting for the A74 yeah I would probably wait too because I think that might be unbelievable wait for that hopefully it'll be announced soon it, it it just depends Cameron whether you want to buy now or you can sort of wait till later yeah it's much light wider i can go you know i can move this like right out uh, if i wanted to go really wide uh, you know and then obviously zoom it in but it's not as sharp i can definitely tell you'd need the 16 to 35 gm 
Uh, this is a 16 to 35 f4. It's fine. I mean, it looks, I think, well, let me know what you think. Do you think the picture quality looks different? Um, the lighting is definitely different because I've left it all white, uh, lit. So I haven't gone dark like I've normally been uh, going. Uh, I noticed the bokeh missing. Yep. Uh, because that was 1.4. So I'm shooting at f4 now. Uh, I thought the lighting was different as well. But let me know what you think about the quality. Let me know underneath too if you're not in the live chat to let me know if you think it's good enough. Um, is it just the ergonomics between the A9 and the A9 II? Um, no, they're basically exactly the same, Wes. It's, it's basically only networking that was different between the two of them. So, look, I always say to people, if you can, I would save the money and buy an A9. And I said that in my review, uh, that I think the A9, the A9 is incredible and I still love it, like I'm using it now. But, but um if, if I was buying another one, I wouldn't hesitate to buy an A9. I, I definitely just wouldn't go out and buy an A9 too because the differences weren't great enough to justify it. Um, yeah, so I think if you can, I would get an A9. Um, have the A7C uh, and thinking about the A7R4A, yeah, that'd be nice because you get the uh, best screen or the R5 as an upgrade. Well, if you already have lenses for the Sony system, I'd just stick with the a 7 uh, R4. The R5 is a great camera though. It really is a great camera. So you can't go wrong with either of them, but you'd have to buy new lenses. Um, so I think, you know, I'm not sure. Um, do you know if the A7R3 uh, has a colored? No, it doesn't. Um, so you only, you have to get the A7R4 REO. So yeah, it's no good. It's, uh, Sony really should add that option in the uh, firmware. They should really give that for all their cameras. Surely that doesn't take much processing to change the color. Oh, no, I, I bet you it doesn't, Oreo. I think they would have only changed the screen. Um, so I don't think that will have it in it. But someone may be able to let us know if, if they have changed that, but I don't think so. I think you'd have to get the R4. Uh, I thought I had bad connection as the quality isn't there. Yeah, see, that's interesting. Yeah, so it might be that I go back to the A6400 and the 16 uh, f1.4. Because this lens is definitely softer. And if I'm going to shoot 4K, I really should probably use that sharper lens. So, yeah, thanks for saying that, Gilbert. Um, the focus staying on your face better. Yeah, it does. I mean, the focus is definitely better on the A9, that's for sure. Um, David, the cage that you have now, does that fit? Um, no, I, I think this only, f I think there was an, another version of this cage, I believe. If, if you go to the review that I did, um, there was another version of this cage that was for the A7 III or the A7 IV, I can't remember, but there was a different cage. This, I think in theory, um, may fit because Aren't they, isn't the body almost exactly the same? I'd have to test it and see. I haven't got an R4 that I could test it. But I think the body is pretty close, so it might just fit. But it's such a form-fitting um, cage that, yeah, I'm not sure. If I had an R4, I'd, I'd test it for you. But I do love it. I love this cage. And particularly, like I said, if you want to get rid of the side, you can make it a half cage if you want to go that way. Um, but... It's And I love this too, because on the side here, uh, it sticks out just a little bit. Let me see if I can just show you. It sticks out just a little bit there, and that gives you a nice grip to hold on to. And this side here is even nice to, to sort of grab on to. But I've never seen a cage that is so nice form-fitting as what uh, this is. It's um, like Megatron. It is, isn't it, Michael? I know. Um, yeah, the A7R4, uh, it, it may fit because I think the bodies are very, very similar. Um, I'm not sure, but I love it. I think it's the best cage I've ever, uh, ever had. I really do love it. Um, Tammy said, good night, David. Got a, a short tutorial and I can't have your voice in the background sounding better. <laughs> yeah, right. See you, Tammy. I'll check out whatever you post. Um, same for me, 1080 60 on YouTube. Yeah, I'm, I'm going out 1080. I think I'm going out 1080 50 actually, cause it's pal here. Um, but yeah, it's definitely not as sharp as what the Sigma lens is, that's for sure. Um, I just haven't, I could probably put the 24GM on there and have a look. I wonder if I should do it now. No, because if I turn the camera off, oh, I could try it. No, I won't. I've got it here, actually. Shall I try it? Let me switch the camera off and I'm going to see if I can put the 24GM on. Let's see if it affects the quality. 
All right, stay tuned. Oh. You got me feeling kind of crazy You got me feeling like my head is spinning around The way you look is so Well, I don't think it liked me doing that. <laughs> I don't think it liked it at all. I think I've gone. Well, why can't that come back? Um, that's weird. Did I move? I'm still just seeing if I can get it up, but it's it's not happy. Oh, here we are. I've got it, but I've got it. Let me adjust the exposure. So let me put this back on. I'll just see if I can bring it back. You got me feeling kind of crazy. You got me feeling like my head is spinning around. The way you look is so amazing, amazing. I could stare into your eyes for hours and hours. Everything is kind of hazy. We're just dancing in the dark in the flashing lights. I know you can't hear what I'm saying, I'm saying So I'm just gonna hold you closer You take me higher when we're together It feels like you set my whole world on fire I know I want you, I know I need you here So if you look at this now, um, can you tell any difference now? So this is the 24GM uh, on here, and I'm on 2.8. I think you can see if I look at my beard, uh, you can sort of see that it's um, it looks a little bit sharper. Well, I'm looking at a big monitor up there, and it seems to be a little bit uh, sharper. What do you think? I'll do a Gerald and uh, <laughs> Gerald and done. Let me know if you can see any difference with that lens. I'll just be curious to know. Um, if you think it looks sharper, um, I'm just seeing if there's any focus breathing. Doesn't look bad, actually. Depth of field is way more interesting, though. Let me go to 1.4 and see what this is like. Whoa. I'd have to up the shutter speed. Look at that, it's 1.4. Boker's back, sharper indeed, and it's bokerlicious. So which way do you like it? Looks a little better, Gilbert said. Um, Boker's back, uh, sharper indeed, uh, nicer, looks a little better. Uh, nope, the background is blurred, you're the same. Oh, okay, interesting. Um, it just shows that, well then, you know what, the interesting thing is it just shows that how good... Um, the Sigma 16 mil is that f1.4 lens. That is super sharp. Uh, it seems to be a bit off focus. Oh, that's interesting. Oh, let me just move it. 
the focus seems mostly on the shirt logo. Ah, oh, so it's moving now. I wonder if I move that. I might have moved that actual focus point. Yeah, it could have been that I've moved the focus point. Let me. <laughs> I think it is. I think it's down here. So see, that's sharp as. Uh, I, I can't move the back of the thing now. That's See, this is the pain with the A9. I, I can't see the screen. And that's the thing that irks me. Whenever you're doing video, if you can't do this and move it out, you know, this is where it's a real pain because I can see from the side. But with the A9, I can't do that. And it's... Um, it's a real nuisance because at least with the A6400, I can see the screen up the top and then I can see where uh, the focus is on because it'll show me where my, um, you know, the, the eye focus and everything else is. Um, so it's, yeah, see, it's moved now. It is a bit out of focus, actually. Yeah, I don't know what it's grabbing. I think it's down here. I think it's moved to there. Yeah, hang on, I'm going to get off this. Let me <laughs> let me just try. <laughs> now I look like I'm. Yeah, I reckon it's. I think it's off. I think it's moved the focus point. But we can't do much about that, which is a shame. But I wonder, like, if I went, probably didn't go to one point. Let me change the. What am I on? 150th. Yeah, I think it's there. I think the focus point's actually there, but I can't see it. I'd have to redo it. I should. I've got it on. I think I had it on zone focus, and I, you know, or, or um, the focus select, and I've got the little square that's sort of pointing down. I think when I was adjusting it, I've moved it. It's gone probably down to about here. So that's probably what's happened. Uh, let me just see before we go. Um, well, the statue. <laughs> was quite interesting. Uh, this one feels like you are in the same room. Um, David Osa Focus was on your sweater, yep. Uh, get the A6400 back with the Sigma 16. I think so, Gilbert, actually. I think I am gonna go back that way. Uh, that's shallow depth of field, super sharp when your face moves into it. Yeah, it is really shallow, isn't it? That's for sure. Uh, aren't you using any monitor to see yourself? I am, but the and I can see now it's not quite sharp, but I like to see where the focus point is, and that's the problem. I can't see on the A9 because the monitor doesn't flip up. Uh, with the A6400 or the A73, A3, um, you can see it's actually in focus, and you can see where the focus point is. So there's a problem with the A9 and any of that series where it's just the flip up normal screen. You can't tell where the eye focus is, um, but it's definitely it's definitely focusing sort of down here. So that red box, I could turn that off and just use face detect, the A9, I probably should have done that with this, rather than say, select an area, like it's more or less in the middle. Um, but face detection though should be taking over and just grabbing my face. So it's interesting why it's not doing that, which is weird, because if I, see it's grabbing focus here, look at that depth of field there. Um, and then if I take it away, so it probably is focusing it's probably got the focus point a little bit down on the, uh, so it's probably down here somewhere. But it should be grabbing eye detection, which is strange. So that that's weird. Um, Dovelos are definitely sharper. Uh, love hate relationship with the A7S III. Not 100% sold on the flip. I miss the tilt. Speed of um, operability and fast uh, situations is better, but flippy is diff and has pros, but prefer the tilt. Yeah, I love the flip out screen. I just love it. Your live streams are way better than most I watch on YouTube, David. So thank you so much, Gilbert. Um, my first pixel peeping live stream. Uh, one thing I like on the A9 is the red box. Well, that's what I've got on this now. It's got the red box on this uh, so I can see it. Um, they don't have that on the A7 III, it's light grey, I know I hate that because you can't see it half the time. David, when shrunk down, all you need was a cigar in your mouth, you would have looked like <laughs> twiddling fingers, I love it. Uh, it. It is, I think, the focus was jumping while you were waving your hand, yeah. Yeah, 
so it's interesting anyway. All right, thanks so much, guys. So I might, I think I'm going to go back to the A7S, uh, the A6400 with the 16 mil so I can see what's going on. Um, it, it's probably focusing on your left eye. My A9 loves doing that for some reason. Oh, okay, thanks, Will. You may, may be doing that perhaps. Some people are flippers. Uh, some uh, tilt. What's that mean? Titters? Is it til tilters? I'm not sure what that means. Uh, that's it anyway. All right. So thank you so much, everyone. And it was all a bit of fun anyway. Uh, but I think I'll go back to the A6400 with the 16 millimeter. Let me just read this one. Albert said, um, "Hi guys. Sorry for the question. Just arrived. Have you checked on the Tamron?" 35 to 150, uh, 2 to F8, um, what do you know? Well, I haven't yet, but I know Tamron contacted me before you guys actually knew about it. I have to keep quiet though. They did say it's coming, um, and I will be getting that lens uh, as soon as it's available here in Australia. That's before it's released. Uh, so I'll definitely have a review up for you. Um, so that will be who knows when that's going to be. They just say to me, they'll get it to me as soon as possible. That'll be both of those lenses. So Tamron are fantastic and they always look after me. Uh, thank you, David, for your time. No problem at all. Uh, Key said, hey, um, nice X-Men, I agree. Uh, any news about the Sony a7 IV? Not yet, Tom. Probably hoping late September. All right, everyone. I'll catch you in the next video. And that's a show. Looking for some place